Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I have cinnamon in my coffee today. It tastes really good. I found the cinnamon. I had lost it for, it was way back in the cabinet, and I finally got my cinnamon. It really, uh, I don't, for some reason, I don't like cinnamon in my coffee for the first cup. Uh, something about the cinnamon when I'm trying to wake up doesn't really work. But the second cup, I like the cinnamon in. Um, so anyway, I was able to uh, find it, and so I'm in a good mood. I have some great uh, information today um, for you. The, but the first thing, I want to get this out of the way, but it, I can't not show you this. The other day, I did a video, and if you haven't watched it, go watch it. Um, it was on Cyprus, and it, you can't miss it because it has a, it's a big map, and it shows XRP in the middle of the island of Cyprus. And I talked about how... The point I was making was that um, after the bailouts that occurred from the financial crisis, which I think is the worst thing ever done in the history of finance, that opened the door for the governments of the world to say, wait, well, th that time we had to depend on politicians to do a bailout for, and get the, from the taxpayers. Well, that's too dangerous. We don't, in a pinch, we don't want to have to depend on a bunch of politicians to go and pass some bailout. So what they did is they said, what we'll do is we'll create what's called a bail-in. So the next time, and, and Cyprus is the first place that I knew of that it, uh, of it being done. Well, um, where, and that's where they actually close your bank and shave a percentage off of the uh, off of, out of your bank account, and then they say it's your patriotic duty, and that's just tough for you. And so basically, you're paying for a bunch of mistakes and screw ups by a bunch of politicians and bankers to bail them out. And so after I did that video and I didn't have any uh, other than Cyprus, I didn't have any, I knew I had heard and I had read that there were other, uh, that, that this was just an established thing that, that the legislation has, has been written in various countries and it's already a policy in various banks. Well, after I did that video, C3 Nick, my go-to Twitter guy half the time, Post this, which is amazing. I mean, if you really want to see what, how underhanded, how crazy this world has become, this, it, C3 Nick put this up, uh, and it says possible bail-ins during the next crisis. As a result, shareholders and creditors of banks under resolution may have to participate in the losses of banks. And then he's got this P PDF. This is from UBS Bank. <coughs> you... I'm not going to read all of this, but go to C3 Nick's feed and, and just look at this because it will blow your mind. And it basically tells you what I told you. And that's that the banks and the governments of the world, they've already passed it. This is already written in stone. The next time you have a huge financial crisis, get ready because they're going to close your bank. They're going to declare a bank holiday and they're going to shave money out of your account. And that's what I said. That's one of the thing, one of the huge things that I saw in crypto was, <clears throat> was a, a when, and, and I told you also that when that Cyprus thing occurred, what I noticed more than anything, it caused, it immediately caused a huge spike in, in Bitcoin and crypto prices, specifically for the reason that I'm telling you, which is when, when banks are treating us like this, that's how you get, that's how the, the that's how things like Bitcoin are hatched is because you can only screw with the people for long enough and they're going to eventually rise up. And I, that's why I have always seen crypto, Bitcoin and, and uh, all of it as, as the rising up of the people financially. That's how this was all hatched. That's where this came from. And so I encourage you and I'll look, I'll just read you just the intro here as a reaction to experience made during the financial crisis in 2008, many countries adopted rules designed to resolve a bank at risk of defaulting without involving taxpayers. In other words, we're not going to do it through the politicians and let you see the bailout. We're just going to close the bank. It says, as a result, shareholders and creditors of banks under resolution may have to participate in the losses of those banks. 
The objective is to ensure the resolution of a bank without the use of public funds. No, we're going to use your individual funds. We don't want to do it. We don't want to do it in public and involve the politicians where they could do a thumbs down because of political pressure that they get from you, the people. We just want to be able to do it without your involvement at all. Then it says, um, well, I'm not going to, well, I'm not going to go through all this, but if you want to read this, it's really surreal. I mean, it's sickening to read this. Well, when I saw C3 Nick post this, I decided that I would like to do go a little further. I wanted to go and look and see what any other bank. So just as a rent, not to pick on any one bank, I just typed in bail in Bank of England and what pops up. This is their quarterly bulletin from 2015. And I'll read you their intro. During the financial crisis, several governments bailed out failing financial institutions because letting the firms fail and enter insolvency would have caused excessive disruption to the critical services that these institutions provide and to the wider financial system. Following the crisis, the framework for managing the failure of financial firms was reformed and a new tool known as a bail-in was developed. Bail-in allows the authorities to make sure that shareholders and creditors of the firm bear the costs of failure without recourse to public funds. Yeah, right. Okay, now I'm going to go on to something much more positive, and that's you and I and what, what is going to happen with XRP. Um, but, quote me, this right here, this bail-in model, this right here is a disaster waiting to happen. And I believe crypto is the answer, period. Okay, I, I showed you this article the other day. This is black. This is a, this was about BlackRock and uh, how Zero Hedge had said that BlackRock, uh, ports from Zero Hedge, BlackRock has formed a team to take advantage of the crypto market. Da da da. I told I've told you for for months and months and months. This is that all of these financial firms are going to come in because they smell the money. They know the money's there. And when they smell the money, they're gonna, it doesn't matter what they've said in the last few months. I know uh, BlackRock's Larry Fink, he's, he said they, would never come, they wouldn't come into crypto and all that. All of them said it, but now they're saying something different. And so I wanted to show you this to show you that this was from last, this was from October 18th this year. So this is just a few days ago that they say BlackRock is coming in. Well, I was on, uh, I've seen two things in the last two days and I'm going to show them both to you and I'm going to make a very large point and I'm going to go, I'm going to show you numbers. See, the interesting thing with numbers, they don't lie and I'm going to, I'm going to do this by the numbers because I want you, I want this to really sink in. Okay. First, um, let's establish, um, that I think I pulled it up somewhere, but anyway, I'll just, I'll just tell you. Let's establish first that the cryptocurrency entire market cap as of today is $210 billion. There's $210 billion in all of crypto. I just showed you an article where BlackRock is now wanting to get in the game, okay? This was a tweet from a guy, uh, I'll credit him, Godfather, at Godfather Crypto, okay? He says, BlackRock is a single investment firm. They manage $6.29 trillion in assets. Crypto's entire market cap is still only $200 billion. Well, as of today, it's $210. And then he says, and I've said this to you many times, we are so early. And that's how he finishes this tweet. So people go on to, uh, uh, I think maybe he replied to his, his self. One firm is 31 and a half times bigger then he's talking about the entire market. One firm is 31 and a half times bigger than the entire crypto market. And so he pulls, pulls the calculator here. Okay. So what, what, uh, I wanted to go over with you and I, I'm going to do BlackRock and then I'm going to do Fidelity. Okay. This is BlackRock using what he just said here, 6.29 trillion. Um, if, if BlackRock, now I don't think any of these firms commit to entering a space without a minimum think thinking in terms of a minimum of putting say 1% of their assets towards that new space. Now think about this. I've told you many times we're talking about the first new asset class that I know of in my entire lifetime and probably a new at first new asset class in two lifetimes. Okay. We're talking about the first. Okay. So 
to say that they're going to put 1% would be extremely conservative. I think it, it, who knows, it could be more towards five. Maybe it's just going to be a half a percent to a percent, which I've kind of thought in the past, but it could be towards five. Okay. But let's, let's, let's use 1% first. 1% of BlackRock's assets would be $62 billion. 5% of BlackRock's ass assets would be $310 billion. That would be more than the current crypto market. Okay. Now moving along, let's go to Fidelity. We already know Fidelity is open Fidelity digital assets. Let's look at the same concept, but I love it when I can find somebody who's much more high profile than I am, who, who is, who obviously has more credibility than I do. Let's look at what CZ Binance said. This is the CEO of Binance. Okay. This is on his Twitter feed. He's saying the exact kind of thing that I've been trying to preach here, which he says, what happens when a fund like Fidelity allocates a mere 5% of their portfolio to crypto? Have you calculated how much this is? Well, yes, the digital asset investor has calculated how much this is, and I'm going to give it to you, my listeners, right now. Fidelity. Now, in, in his example, um, and he said, and he also says, nice, institutional money will enter sooner or later, just a matter of time. I think I've said just a matter of time, too. Okay, so... What he did is uh, somebody replied to him, I guess, and they said, right, that little 5% is more than doubling, almost tripled the entire crypto market cap. And some people are still worried about. Um, and so, in other words, they're saying, this is such a no-brainer. What are people even worried about? Because they're telling you they're coming. In Fidelity's case, they've already come. It's just a matter of phasing it in. But in this example, they, they pulled something from the Internet that I've seen Fidelity having 7.1 trillion in assets, and I, and here they they show 6.8 billion in assets, or uh, not 6.8 billion. Uh, I think they meant trillion there because they're. Uh, I think that this figure is wrong because I know that it's 7.1 trillion, so this must have been a 6.8 trillion uh, number. But anyway, it's actually 6.8 to 7.1 trillion. Okay, so if you take Fidelity in the case of Fidelity, one percent. Of, I used 6.8 trillion. 1% is 68 billion if Fidelity put 1% into this market. If they put 5% into this market, it would be 340 billion, which is larger than the current crypto market. So let's look at these both together Fidelity and BlackRock. If both of them put 1% of their assets into crypto, that would be 340 billion billion dollars so it would over double it would over double the market cap if both of them put five percent it would be 860 billion dollars okay now what i did here is i added i added them at, at one percent both of them and then uh, added the current 210 billion market cap so it would put the total crypto market cap, I'll correct myself, it would put the, at 1%, if they both put 1% in, the total crypto market cap would be $340 billion. If they both put 5% in, $860 billion crypto market cap. Now, let's put that in further perspective. And this is just as I showed you before, it's currently at 210. Let's put that in a little further perspective. What you're looking at here is the is crypto is coin market cap this is one year of the entire coin uh, uh, crypto market cap what i want to show you is that ripple's peak which was around three dollars and fifty cents the total market was at eight hundred and thirty billion dollars if only as i just told you if only fidelity and blackrock came in and put five percent of their assets towards crypto the market would be over what it was in December, right up to January of last year, which I think it peaked on around January 7th in this chart, it would be at $860 billion. That is two firms, two firms at one, at, at, at 5%, that's two firms. At 1%, the total market cap is over $340 billion versus t today's $210 billion. That's two firms. I'm going to finish this video by showing you these are the top 400 asset ma managers in 2018, BlackRock, Fidelity, 
look at all of these people who are coming to the game. It's just a matter of time. I'm not saying every single one of them, but I am saying most of them, if not all. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. Buy your Ledger Nano S if you haven't. I'm not sure if that sale is still going, but go and check. It's in the link, the description of all my videos. Tell your friends and family that the digital asset investor said that if Fidelity and BlackRock invested 5% of their assets into crypto, it could take Ripple past $3.50. That's a fact. Thank you for listening.